Good afternoon. Welcome to Options Tender. Sorry about the uh, videos, you guys. It turns out that my power cord was the issue. So I got that uh, settled and we're making videos now. We're doing this intraday um, on Friday, September 13th, Friday the 13th, 2024, about 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to get these videos intraday, consider becoming a supporter. 99 cents. And if you want any additional uh, individual videos, uh, individual names, um, consider being an uh, individual um, member. Okay, so we're going to jump through SPY. It's a real critical point here, and I do think we're going to get somewhat of a pullback at this point. So we're going to zoom through the higher time frames, and then we're going to go through SPY, QQQ, IWM, and SMH, and the VIX on the 65 and we have to move around some lines. I wasn't able to uh, work on my computer and uh, do proper technical analysis. So we're gonna do this together, but uh, I could see what's going on. So here we go. We have uh, SPY on the monthly time frame, 2000 top, 21, 21 top, and we're forming 24 top. Okay, so we're, we're pushing off of the trend line now. We're getting um, uh, like a hammered doji. We're forming a top. We're still in this range here. And, you know, that's not unusual. That's what we have over here. We have three months of price action. We'll see where the month ends and uh, going into the end of October and into September, um, end of September into October. I think that we'll uh, see some pretty volatile moves by then. Okay, so let's go to the weekly. On the weekly time frame, we're just going to take a look at the this page here, uh, see how important of an area we're at. We have the 162. That's our final target. We're just kind of playing around, uh, testing that over and over. So if we get above that, then we're going to see some lower time frame, uh, higher areas here. But notice that we're 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 still basically in this two week range right here. We haven't made a new high and I'll show you the downtrend line is right there. Uh, we did push off the 20 uh, simple simple moving average on the weekly time frame, And so it, it kind of appears that uh, we're gonna be in this range for a minute here. So this is gonna be super important to, to watch this, this range and of course the 20 simple moving average so let's even go to the lower time frame and and just to um reiterate this is the 23.6 area that the price came back to if we start from this bottom structure here so all of this can be wave three and then we're working on a wave four and so i'll just tell you right now in my opinion i think we're working a triangle uh we're going to be going up anyway so even if it's not a triangle i'll show you what it's going to look like Let's go to the daily time frame, and we're looking for 10.10. So on the uh, weekly, we have a time and price zone here from 10.10 10 to 10.18. So we'll be looking at that uh, when the when time gets there, we'll be looking at that uh, time to price ratio, okay? Or relationship. Daily time frame, we have this bullish rising wedge broke down from it and now I think we're going to get new highs. Are we going directly there? That's possible. And you know, going into FOMC, so I'm holding on to all of my calls. I have a bunch of swings well out of the uh time frame that we need to. And so if we go up into our targets, which is 580, I think I have it on here, about 580 here, you'll see that uh confluence of all of these trend lines here that uh, would be our final target so if we go into fomc um, depending on where we're at i think that might be the spot where we could pull back into and notice this range right here we're just getting back into that range okay so getting to the top of this range we could play right back down to about let's uh keep an eye on about five 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 okay we said how important that was when we broke down from there now that we recovered it maybe we reject off the top area here and the downtrend line that we're now forming and we come back to test the 20 simple moving average around 555 okay so i had i already put on some uh, put protection today going into uh, fomc on wednesday so just to give us um 
you know, uh, I'm, I'm very confident in my calls, but I like to add a little protection, especially if price kind of zips down uh, into Monday and Tuesday, then that will give us a nice um, setup to go back long. Okay. Moving over to this board here, we're looking at uh, price ultimately getting to this 127.2 target and that's a 580 and this not isn't necessarily how I'm counting it in my head this is a one two and it doesn't matter three so if we reject off here it could be wave four and five I think we're gonna look at it a little bit different now especially if we do get the rejection I think this is gonna be um, still a wave four but this is the a B C D and E for an ascending triangle we get a pullback here uh, for E and then we get our wave five to end it and with that said that would start the count all over again and uh, we'd have a nice five wave move into the um, uh, 580 so again that's that it, this is speculative on how you count these things so we won't uh, we'll be looking to get to the target and um, but we'll try to build some structure off of it. So we're looking at um, we had our low here again on 911. So let's get rid of those. And we're looking at we're past this one here. It's the same low there 911. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so that was a good low, and we're coming into price right now on here the 13th, and we're coming into it right now into the weekend so we may have a top that happens here today unless price just keeps driving higher and that's possible too uh, but we're like I said we just now put on put protection and I want to get to that right now so I can show you exactly why and then we'll be looking for these clusters here into uh, FOMC all right so that's coming up here soon so whether we have a bottom into FOMC and then a zoom up here or if we go directly up there and then we'll look for reversal at the um, at this time cluster right here that's 920 and 919 so right after FOMC okay going on the 65 in here we're gonna have to I'm gonna show you just how I look at things I haven't touched anything here yet and I'm looking at this being a possible inverse head and shoulders that would mean that we're going directly higher okay but uh, we do have a trend line we're making lower highs here even though it's very deep deep retracement to that high here so it's almost just a, a slight a slightly downsloped neckline from this point a little bit lower and we're coming into that zone here now so um, with that said we're gonna move this because we think price is gonna break higher and so now we have this triangle forming here and although I still think we go higher now we can actually test back to either the breakout zone or somewhere around that 555 that we we're talking about that would be you know fairly shallow but that here's the bottom of the range right here five 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 okay so that that's a possible and so what some people will say is okay well it's not necessarily a triangle it, and it doesn't have to be this could be a one two three wave four coming into here into FOMC and then a wave five to complete this and now that would go exactly with what I'm looking at but both the Q's and spy don't have to have the same count okay so you have one two so far I know this is very messy here I gotta clean this up and we're looking at stopping here at wave three and we're looking at wave four into FOMC that's about the 917 going to 918 you see this nice cluster here and possibly pulling back into that into five five fives for wave four and then um, Wave five, wave three is already bigger than wave one. So wave five can take us all the way to our target. Now you see we have this one, two, and then, you know, three, four, five, whatever. That's not really what I'm looking at. I'm actually looking at this overall 
to be the last move here in an ending diagonal for an A, a B, and this is a C where we have the five wave move here in the yellow. Okay? And that's, if you're new here, I'm going to backtrack just a little bit. That's our alternate here. This is what we've been looking at for so, so many months, uh, over probably over a year, a long time. So you have a one, it's a three wave move into a one, three wave move into a two, three A, B, C, three wave move into a three. We got wave four here, and now we're looking for a three wave move for a five to complete this. Okay, so with that said, Let's go back down to the 65 and then we'll roll over to the other items that we're looking at. So I, I'll probably change the label on this just so it's a little bit more clear for you. I had different scenarios playing out. It's all, I just gotta get all of these out of here. All right, we'll hide these and then we'll go over to the cues. So we're getting into a time frame right here today. So we might have a top here with this 913 one. I'm gonna take that out. Take this, this projection is at the low that we're at right now. This down here was a little bit more bearish scenario. So this, um, that's where I had these turquoise lines. All right. We posted that, we make posts every so often. So I was saying this could be an ending diagonal that goes lower. We held the lows and now we're ripping to the upside. Just a great move here. And we're probably getting some divergences and whatnot. And uh, you know, so not yet, not really a little bit on the slow soak. We don't have one here. And so th that says to me is that even if we do, because we're over uh, bought here, we pull back, then we'll probably make a divergence going into um, a wave five or uh, depending on how low we pull back, um, we'll we'll watch. We'll watch to see what, the, what happens here. And I also want to note that we had this, we were looking for just that small area because this looked like a three-wave move to us, but we didn't know what happened in this little area here. So we're looking at that 62% uh, retracement. It held, we had a nice sharp pullback. It held twice and now we got above it. So it's confirmation that, you know, this thing's going higher so we can get rid of that now. And we're just gonna follow this path up. So we could either go directly there to our targets, 580. That would be a, a pretty big move. But what I suspect is that we'll um, stop here on that downtrend line and we'll get a little bit of a pullback here for an ascending triangle and that that will give plenty of energy for this last leg higher so around the 555 you got about a 250 point or 25 point um am i doing math correct that'd be 60 so about 25 yeah 250 points on the uh, s p and on spy about uh, 25 points here directly up for a last hurrah and you're going to see a lot of names kind of little names zipping up and just ripping uh for their last hurrah here and i think this is um where we in this uh last move here now there is another price higher if it gets above 580 and holds above 580 we'll have to keep an eye out for that our last target there would be 599 okay um, I, I don't think that's the case, but anything can happen, uh, on, you know, with the glass gasp here. So we'll see going into FOMC. I think that, uh, we might get a new low and go tag this 580. That's my primary scenario. QQQ, what does this look like? Well, we had this, uh, kind of flag breakout. I'm going to, this flag broke down. So we want to get rid of that, kind of clean this up a bit. And what we're looking at is a downtrend line here. From these highs, we're coming into that downtrend line and a confluence of gap, the gap here. Uh, so we can close that gap. And now we can kind of draw this as a triangle. Because we're really, what uh, this says is that we're forming an equilibrium. We had a wide range here. We're just coming and we're uh, 
So this is the triangle that I was really talking about. You can say spy is a triangle, or you can count it every which way you want to. But this ultimately, I think, here is the bow and arrow. Support resistance is kind of our volume node here that we're going around, trading around. So this is a possible area, and that's what I did was I put Q puts on. Q, 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 and I'll just give you a free setup right now. The Qs we're going, uh, we put out to FOMC on Wednesday, out of the money puts to about 460, and um, it might have been 462, but uh, they're about 50 cents, and I put uh, several of those on. Uh, to protect our call positions and if this gets a nice sharp move going into wednesday then um we'll be looking or even the bottom of the triangle and uh then we'll be looking for the resumption to the upside to um and and that might not be the case you guys because this is if this is just a simple a b c then this we're going to get a shallow way four probably and continue to move higher all right, so just because this looks like a triangle doesn't make it an actual triangle count. Okay, so this ultimately can just be the ABC, how we have it here in white. But we have to keep in mind not to get scared if price goes a little bit deeper into that those uh, the 460 zone. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I had 460 puts. Um, so this could ultimately be counted as let me change the um let me change the actual color of the letters here so we can get the alternate scenario and with this said so this could be our a down here a three wave move down for an a and believe me, I think this is an impulse wave down. All right. So if we get into a triangle, it says that we get a new high. And so we have to keep that possibility in mind that that is still possible and that this is an A, B, C move here. So this would be an alternate scenario if we do get a new high. And I don't care if it gets a new high or not. I think this um, is the last hurrah for um, the market. And we'll see where SPY is when uh, the Qs get to the 887. That's where I'm going to start layering in some, some puts. But right now, as of right now, this is a three-wave move right here. So is this a three, 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 and then we get our last three pullback? That would mean that this is a... Um, this is a possibly a triangle now to the extent that we want to get um the market wants to confuse us let's go ahead and put this possible let's finish this up here because this is super important now on these last moves here it doesn't have to be an impulse wave it can be a five wave motive wave which i'm not trying to get too technical going to fomc this is possible wave e so if this is just a simple A, B, and C going into our target here at the 887 and then get the, getting the reversal off of there, what will look confusing is if this is a three-wave move and we get a deep pullback. Now what that could be is an A, B, C into a 1 in an ending diagonal. This can get a nice sharp pullback for 2 three and then wave four will probably overlap here over at wave one and this is all three wave moves and then our final wave up here uh will be a wave five to make this a possible zigzag or even a flat doesn't matter wave c is always a five wave move so this they'll probably get us in here making us think that um you know it stops here, pulls back, and that we're going to have brand new highs uh, because this is a triangle, and you're going to have a nice five-wave move up to the um, uh, brand new all-time highs. When in that case, this might just be an ending diagonal uh, where uh, the triangle looks like it's going to break out, and it does. It gets above this uptrend line, and then it will look like a fake break. We go to close this gap 
And if price breaks back down, back into the triangle past it, this thing is going to be considered a fake break and it's going to be a sharp move, which that's what we're anticipating anyway. But just visually, this is what that is going to look like. Okay. Everybody's going to um, celebrate and say, oh man, we're just going to keep going because you can have the measure move from this triangle uh, way, way above the all time high. Okay. When and if we get to that point, we'll talk about it. But uh, if we start breaking these highs here, then I think that will be the case that this triangle is playing out as a uh, wave four and we have a wave five above. All right, this is an impulse wave to me right now, and I think we're getting an A, B, C. And I think we will probably reject into FOMC for a couple days, which uh, we're a little overbought, so I think that might be the case. And some will count this as an A, B, C, D, E. I think this is more likely to be an ending diagonal and it's not going to go as sharp to the upside as we think. And that's it. But we'll see. All right. Just raking out these um, possibilities. So again, this looks like a triangle, right? So um, I think this is likely the case here that price action goes all the way to the 235 so we could get a really sharp move here from iwm going up to a wave b so this is the all-time high we get an a you'll see the red a here and then we had a nice big wave b and we're finishing that off with an ending diagonal one two we had a b here for the three because it's three wave move it's just a big ending diagonal four and so even if this is a wave four triangle, we're looking for a new high to five. So honestly, it doesn't matter how you count it. And so if we get our pullback right off of this, well, let me go back. If we get a pullback off of this downtrend line right now, you know, we could come back to about the 210 or so. And some people say this at A, B, C, D, E. Great. And then we'll have a five-wave move uh, way back up there. But I, I'm counting it more as this is wave four complete, and we're looking for an A, B, and then uh, somehow we'll get a wave five in here. So if it's sharp, well, we could say one, two, three, four, five up there. So who cares how you count it? I think the target gets a new high, goes up to that... Uh, last position there about 235 so that's a pretty vicious move on uh, iwm but i think they'll carry a lot of those stocks that have been suppressed and we'll be looking into individual stocks i'll do this for the members like square for example i think that's going to move i have a bunch of them on there uh we're looking at um a bottoming process and and boeing so i'll make all these videos coming up here in the next uh hopefully this weekend, next couple days or so. Let's go visit SMH just to see what's happening here. Look at that. Same thing, downtrend line. We're going to have the same thing. We're equilibrium. I think that ultimately this resolves to the upside. So should we get a pullback here? Why not? Pull one, two, three, four, five. That would just make this more of a... Uh, a zigzag or a flat pattern. It doesn't matter. A, B, C. The VIX. So the VIX should be hinting to us. Maybe it's into some support. We see we have the gap support here. Maybe by the end of the day, you know, it closes this gap or so, but we have another gap support. But either way, if we get some sort of reaction here to go higher, it looks like we have an unfinished. Uh, wave pattern here so if you consider this a one two three we should get a little bounce here four and then close these gaps and i don't know if they'll make a new low or not but we'll be looking for this pattern to finish off maybe just a brand new low here and then we can really make this a big wedge uh to look out for a breakout again okay so if we make a new low we'll we'll draw a trend line from these highs here to that high 
all the way down and we'll look for a breakout at that point. As a matter of fact, I'll get it ready just in case. From that eye to this one, we'll be looking for price action to stay underneath this downtrend line as the market goes a little bit higher and close. Even though we might get a bump up, we'll look to close these gaps and in a break above this trend line here and we should be starting our recession off. All right. That's what I got for us, you guys. Thanks for joining us here at Options Center. Glad to be back. Hope this information helps. Don't forget to like the video. We'll talk to you tomorrow.